Okay, hi everyone. My name is Rashi Desai and I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois Chicago. I'm pursuing my master's in management information systems. And currently I'm working as an R&D intern at PepsiCo on the data engineering team. And I'm so glad that you all have joined me today as I talk about the careers of tomorrow, decisions, data, and business. And I know many of you might be joining in from different time zones, so greetings to you all. So um, before I begin um, talking about this session, I have a question for you all and feel free to use the chat box for any comments or questions you have. So we all know that there are 7 billion people on this planet, but can you take a guess and write on the chat box as to how many are active internet users? out of the 7 billion people? I see 3.8, 4 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion. So it's actually 4.4 billion. So Patricia and Jennifer, you were very close. Um, so the 2.6 billion people are not on the internet or not using internet, but they certainly will in the next, say, five or six years. So I was reading this article on Forbes a few days back where it read that um, humans are generating a lot of data that's so um, obvious, but around 150 zettabytes, that is one zettabyte is around 10 to the power 21 bytes, which is 150 trillion gigabyte of data will need to be analyzed by 2025. So hey, Tomorrow is data and data is tomorrow. And um, tech is expanding at a rate like never before. And data is the new frontier and it's the driving force for businesses in the rapidly expanding technological world of today when smartphones, tablets, or um, smart watches, laptops, all these devices have become an inseparable part of the human life. So it's obvious that humans would tend to generate a lot of data, but there has to be someone who can analyze that data for insights or knowledge uh, so that it helps businesses to make better informed decisions. And that's all we would be talking about today. So that's the agenda. Now, when we talk about data and businesses, it's first important to recognize how do businesses solve problems. So there are different categories of problems that a business might face, be it a small business or a multinational conglomerate. So there has to be problems such as they would have to visualize the areas where they can improve or identify factors that influence their customer experience. They would want to observe the train trends on the sales if it's a holiday season or say there's a Memorial Day sale or something like that. And then also it's very important for businesses to identify the employee efficiency or map their quarter sales report on the clients and there are different kinds of problems so here i introduced the four stage method which the businesses would um, generally do to solve their problem so first is identifying the problem where the problem lies and then you build a hypothesis hypothesis where you just um say that okay this can be the thing or no, this cannot be the thing. And then we gather data on that um, hypothesis and prioritize the best pos possible solution from all the knowledge that we have from the prior. The next step comes implementation of that planning. So here we identified a possible solution, but now we need to implement that solution and see what the KPIs are, um, how and um, when the KPIs show a deflection or how to build systems that can track the performance of the business. So when we need to track performance, then comes measurement where you evaluate your performance against benchmarks or customer data or competitors that you have on a common landscape. And then um, you identify how your sales or productivity or just the numbers we churn for the scope of improvement. And when comes the improvement, we use knowledge that was derived from measurement to refine our business problem again. And 
see if we have a better solution from the past. So this is a cycle uh, which the businesses would like to um, take forward. Now, when businesses have problems, they need solutions. This is where data comes in. So businesses would love to use some concrete base while they solve their problems. So data is everywhere around us. We just need to know how to use it. So first, it would start with um, defining the problem, say, what are the key opportunities that lies ahead of us? What's the exact problem? And as we discuss, we develop the hypothesis. But even for that, we need some prior um, knowledge for that. And for that, we next collect the relevant data. And we just see how it goes, uh, preparing or wrangling the data, as they say, in the data world. Next is preparing the insights. So we just explore the data to see if we can accept a hypothesis or we can reject a hypothesis. What part should we go forward? And once we have those explorations, we can apply different qualitative or quantitative analytical techniques, I would say, to validate if that hypothesis stands true. And then comes in the different visualization tools. You might have heard of Tableau or um, Power BI or something like that, where you put your outcome to the interactive dashboards. And when we talk about outcomes, this is when we develop the pathways for the communication to our stakeholders, where we provide recommendations and um, develop the call to actions as in what should be done forward. So next comes are the actions where we execute the plan and finally the KPIs are measured. So this is how businesses um, leverage data for their um, benefits. But amongst all of this, where do we fit in? As in when we are talking about careers of tomorrow and if it's data, where, where do we, we fit in? So I would say that data in any business decision making is an essential capability within an organization because it helps any business take faster decisions with um, some proof and then there would be more data explorations, more data insights. You can track your visualizations and business in initiatives better so that the KPIs are um, in place. And then you can also identify um, different pockets. So now say there's a little bakery that uh, you started as your um, passionate dream and then uh, you have been doing good sales for quite a few uh, time, but you don't really know what marketing strategy to come up with. So this is where you use data. You analyze what all uh, people have been buying in, what are they buying in, at what times do they come in, do they prefer to take away or do they prefer to dine in? Not at this point of time, obviously, but uh, what are the different uh, trends that are going on in your little bakery shop. And from there, um, if you analyze the data and you prepare some visualization boards, you might come to know that, oh, our uh, cupcakes are really famous for people above the age of, say, 50. And that that's when you can introduce a marketing scheme where you can say that um, if you are someone above the age of say 45 or 50, then hey, take a 10% discount. And this is where you get in more customers. And this is where you also talk talking about the ROI and stuff. So this is what uh, can lead us to coining the term of data driven decision making where you use data to drive your decision making. So there are uh, different um, reasons that I have uh, accumulated, five of them. The first being um, data is now a priority for top organizations. So to say that we have a different number of statistics that um, Forbes and Entrepreneur has um, given in the past year, so they say that 53% companies are adopting big data analytics and then 95% of businesses need some um, thing to manage their unstructured data. And by unstructured data, we mean just raw data. There's nothing lying in. So we need to prepare that data. Um, the big data industry will be worth an estimated $77 billion by 2023. Ooh, that's a lot of money. And then 90% of IT professionals plan to increase their um, BI standings or so. 
and businesses that have used uh, data had 10% in um, cost reduction in their overall cost reduction and profit increase of about 8 to 10%. Um, Aneta is asking where to find the data, how do you obtain data? So there are a different uh, sources where you can uh, see there are um, categories. If say you want to get some data from the US population, that data.gov would be a very good site to begin. Um, Google has a really good data set. Um, so that, this is where uh, you can do if you want to do projects, but if this is uh, something which when I talked about the bakery example, uh, this is where you just use um, your billing system or you can do surveys or something like that. So there are different ways to get the data, but it really depends how you want to use your data. So this is one question I would like I like to ask again, what power would you like to have at your workplace? This question is really important when we move forward to the next point because data might give you one of those powers. Exactly, I see a lot of people saying decision making. So yes, we all love the power that we are given the freedom to make decisions and a male boss doesn't poke their nose and just say that, hey, you know what? this might not be the best solution. No, because data is the core of business decision making in any organization and data gives you that power. As a data professional, you develop all these business strategies and you come up with different solutions to different problems. And there's no way someone can disregard your business strategy. So yeah, the power and the freedom to just decide what is good for the business. Now, this is a good um, distribution of how data was consumed by each industry. Now, obviously, the information services, IT industry has to be a major consumer of data. But if you see, there are a lot many players starting from retail, which is about 12%. And then we have finance industry. We have educational industries where data is being used, food, healthcare. Um, even in the petroleum and um, sustainability, there are different, um, I would say, uh, leads taken by different um, businesses, large scale businesses, say Microsoft just say they would reduce their carbon footprint. But how do, do they know that they have this carbon footprint? So all of these things really depend on data. So this is where the consumption is. You think of an industry and that data is. The third one is to choose from a range of job titles. So this is all the roles that can be in a data industry. Say you can be an analyst, you can be an engineer where that is a mix of visualization and a lot of analysis and then coming up with some uh, models as well. There's data scientist, of course, data architect, the administrator, you can be a statistician, um, you can be a consultant, um, just in a firm and consult how to use what data and what should be your um, priorities. So this is what uh, power data gives that you can choose what you want to become. And eventually it should lead you probably seven, eight or 10 years down the line as the chief information officer in a business. So this is what we, what we all are aiming for. And the fourth and the fifth points are larger pay, of course. Now, you all must also have um, read that data science or data jobs are the sexiest of the 21st century and so, but it does have a lot of opportunities and much larger pay when you compare to just um, being a normal um, person in tech. Um, and then there are a large number of industries open. Now, you think of McDonald's or you think of Walmart or IBM, everyone needs data you you won't believe but i actually um in the grace hopper conference i uh, went to s lothers um booth and even they were hiring data analysts and on a parallel note just think of us working as data analysts at sephora and then having a lemon grass lemon tree whatever sheet mask on our faces and making dashboards wouldn't that be a great thing to do so that's where you have a number of industries open. You choose what domain you would like to go. 
And this is some basic skills, tools, and forwards because I know many of you might not be from the data background. So this is what you would need uh, to start your data career. So if you talk about hard skills, there would be um, data management, and that could go from data governance to data um, wrangling, which is preparing the data into its form, data storage, and all sorts of things with data. And then there is querying data where you um, get data some part of the data from a huge database. And then of course, math and statistics. And then you got to know some of the visualization tools. Programming is very important if you are going forward with um, data science, but it's not really important if you are going with data analysts. Some of the um, tools like Google Analytics or Tableau does not require coding at all. So that's a good point. And then if you talk about um, skills, problem solving is, of course, a must for any field that you go in, but especially for data science, it's a problem in hand which you are trying to solve. So that's where uh, problem solving comes in. Critical thinking, business acumen, of course, because you would be making decisions for business. So um, that's really important. You understand what business you are dealing the data with. And then, of course, the writing and communication skills, because you would be making a lot of dashboard so you need to really know how to present things to people and these are some of the um, tools or resources or softwares that i would say can be used for different things so if we talk about data management then there's um, sql which many of you might have heard of that structured query language and then there are um, no sql databases as mongodb or you can use couchdb cassandra different um, tools up there and there's Haroop and there's uh, SAP HANA and for visualizations. Now, I really uh, didn't know about TIPCO Spotfire, but TIPCO has a really huge um, customer database. So this is where uh, we just go forward with uh, the huge client base that Spotfire also has because it's a bundled service. So um this is for data visualization and if we talk about data analytics oh my god there's python you can use r there's sas which is uh very business oriented but again it, that exists and then there is spss by ibm then there's matlab that you can use for your um programs in math uh, moving forward um if you want to grab a screenshot of these major certifications and courses and i've done all of them so i know these are pretty good ones. Um, I would especially recommend the one um, IBM data science. If you're looking forward to uh, understand what actually data science is, that's a perfect way to begin. And I would move next to some of the companies that have been using data for raising up their business. So Coca-Cola has been using data for um, quite a few years now to focus on their customer acquisition and retention. Um, Netflix has been using the data for targeted marketing. You, of course, know recommended for you or suggested for you. Even on different websites, you would see on Amazon, um, for example. So these uh, companies use all the data and then they um, define pockets of this data and see what's going on when um, a certain customer has certain choices. PepsiCo has been using Tableau specifically for supply chain management and um, data regarding that. Amazon considers, considers data as a driver of their innovation and product development. Um, Chipotle actually used data when it came to consumer experience and fast deliveries and making their um, response time quick. Um, Amex, um, of course, it's a financial firm, so risk management is a really great factor. So data is all about risk management and then there are different examples um, charles schwab's or starbucks using for revenue growth so this is where all data comes in and you use them companies are using them and as i said there's a lot of data and a lot can be done with data so if you are thinking about transitioning from a certain career to a different career do consider data as your um choice and um, I'm going to take a few questions now. So let me go back to the chat session. Okay. Um, Sandhya is asking at the end of the session, can you please share different data science rules slide again? Sure. 
Sunday, is this the one? Do any of these companies hire data scientists without a degree, but only certifications? Yeah, I mean, I am not a data science major. I am a person pursuing management information systems, but there I am studying data science. And then I'm doing different courses, which enhances my profile or makes me relevant to that field. So if your resume shows that you have done enough work in that field to know and to put something valuable on the business's table, then sure, why not? I mean, you can go ahead and do as many certifications as you want, but getting knowledge is important. So I would say that's the thing where uh, certifications help. Do we have any more question? Okay, Hazel, where do you get the tools, applications used by different companies targeting a specific company and want to work in there as a data analyst or scientist? Um, Hazel, so I, if I am understanding your question correctly, are you asking that um, different companies use different tools? So how to get those tools for your practice? Is that what you're trying to ask? Because in the field of data analytics or science or um, the different roles that I have on my screen right now, there are a few popular ones which majority of the companies uh, use as a as on when you have your role as a data scientist or analyst. So, um, right, the tools that they use. Okay, um, yeah. So actually, it depends. Um, if it's a really big firm like say Google or Microsoft, they would be using almost each and every tool and it's not um, confined where you just use R or you just use Python for your coding. Now, if I am working in a certain firm, it's not um, that I will just be using Tableau for my visualizations. I would also be using Power BI if it comes to some business intelligence problems. So um, that's something which depends on what is the problem in hand okay apurva is asking do you recommend the certifications for product or project managers um i would just say that when i talk to certain recruiters or certain people from data science in the industry they say that certifications are a reflection that you are going beyond the um classroom theory or say just the knowledge because Online certifications compares each and every one at a um, specific level. It puts you to the same um, tests. So if you are doing a certification and if you are able to complete it, that shows that you have a certain skill. So I'm, I think uh, that's when I can say that it just enhances your profile and it enhances your chance of understanding what's happening with a business. Now, if I understand um about project management there's this whole thing from ideation to launch now in between also comes uh, probably customer acquisition or some marketing strategy but um if as a project or product manager if you have the insights of your already existing customers and what they know i think it would be helpful as a manager as well What are a few good websites to showcase your data analysis projects? Um, I would would not know as in a certain websites, but I would say Kaggle is a good place to begin with because they really have um, different challenges coming up. So you can just work on that project, on that challenge, submit your work. And um, if you win the challenge, that's a great thing. Um, and yeah, just keep doing the projects and probably you can just go ahead and uh, put it on your GitHub so that whenever it's on your, so it's on your resume or on LinkedIn. So whenever someone visits your GitHub, the projects are there. But I mean, um, Kaggle is a good one. Which of the roles in the data industry do you think are most useful working in finances and how do you think these two fields will pair in the few years to come? So data and finance, if I talk about the major, major role is a risk analyst or something which has to do with risk management. And for that, um, 
uh, the knowledge of finance uh, of course you would have that but it it's um, good if you have the business knowledge when you talk about data industry in finance but um, business analyst and risk analyst are two of the top ones that i can say the top roles in the finance industry does that answer gloria to your question all right um position looking for a place in tech can i enter the healthcare oh my god healthcare is the field for now even i would be taking a class on healthcare analytics and there are a huge number of things that can be done because hospitals are the ones that were the last to adapt to technology in general and now they are flooded with data so uh, in general healthcare industry is not able to um understand how to use this and there are a whole lot of different things there's this telemedicine or um where you talk with doctors and they solve your problems and stuff like that but um for healthcare yeah that's a really good place to start with so um sana to your question i would just say that if you keep learning um the different tools it's just that you uh have to align yourself to that specific domain otherwise the tools and the skills remain the same i don't think you have to um learn something very specific to healthcare but general um jargons in the healthcare world i i think that would be something that you would want to know before you start analyzing your data with um healthcare industry Meenu is asking how to earn LinkedIn certification. Are you asking uh, for data analyst? Do we need to complete course for certification on LinkedIn? Um, Meenu, can you um, elaborate your question? I'm not really sure what you're trying to ask. does data science require a deep knowledge in mathematics so if you are talking about neural networks or deep learning or something very core to um data science then yes uh, linear algebra and calculus and that things uh, surely do come in because integration and differentiation and all of that stuff um has to do something with the core data and data science algorithms as neural nets or something like that so um if you are going very deep into data science you would might uh, want to brush up a little bit on your um, calculus okay um do we have to have linkedin certification i had certification from udemy um see the thing is um it's not really important to show this hard certificate kind of thing that hey i did this i mean it's of course good that you can showcase your progress that you have done but it what really matters is you learn out of that because even if you write that you have gone through this or uh, you have done this certifications at the end if you are talking to a recruiter or someone on a data science team they would ask you that what did you do after this um, course was done what project did you come up with from the learnings of that particular certification or something like that so your journey doesn't just um stop at doing the certification it's also beyond that but i mean yeah you um linkedin certification can be a good way to begin with because i see a lot of beginner courses up there sana how can i uh, how can a physician switch from clinical medicine to data science in healthcare um to be frank i don't really know um any good tools that i could suggest um shifting to data science in healthcare but um i would just say that um just go forward with um understanding how data science in healthcare works so i know there are a lot of um projects different type of projects where uh, which date healthcare data scientists do one can be regarding the insurance data where there is um all of these um 
I mean, um, just things where, okay, yeah, what people redeem their insurance, um, what's the copay that someone's paying or if they are not paying. And um, there are two categories of um, the insurance that we have. So are they taking the first one or the second one? And um, so it really depends on what data can you gather about it. So clinical medicine to data science, I'm really not sure, Sana, how um i would be able to help on that but i mean if you if um i'm gonna write my linkedin here so we can really connect on linkedin and i know uh many of my uh, friends have had a class on healthcare analytics so i mean i can ask them and get back to you but i don't really know at this point of time how to switch that Thank you, Karintha. I really appreciate that. Is there not any role with informatic security LinkedIn? Yes, of course, there, there is. Um, I was just reading a, this um, article on information security and cybersecurity clubbed with data analytics um, maybe yesterday or day before yesterday. So yeah, there exists the uh, ones that I've listed in my presentation are the popular ones. But of course, as I said, you imagine a domain and there's a data career in there. There's no way anyone can just go forward with um, without data. Sharing the article. I'm sorry if I'm reading it wrong, but a chill. Um, these roles, I mean, um, okay. Yeah, sure. I can, uh, can you just, uh, drop me a message on LinkedIn and I can surely forward you, um, the roles that I came, uh, to know about the information security fields. It has more to do with data science, of course, but there exists data and security together. So I'm going to stop presenting now. And thank you, Minu. Thank you, Rashi. Hi. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Okay, Gloria, um, what do you think are the best ways to learn data science? Where to get the most credited certifications? I personally prefer Coursera or um, Udacity because of the depth of the courses they have from beginner to intermediate to advanced level. So um, that's a place you can start with. Um, there's of course LinkedIn learning, but I would say if you want to really learn, um, I would suggest Coursera or Udacity and Udacity is offering the first 30 days for free. Um, Coursera has some really good courses from some really great institutes for free these days. So, I mean, that's great. Um, Jessica here um, would be able to help for um, health and social data. So, Sarah, you can connect to her in case you want to know more about healthcare. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in today. And it was really great talking to you all. And I'm quickly pulling up my LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me and let me know if you have any questions. I have a math background and currently learning Python programming language. What do you think should be the next step to take in order to enter the do as many projects as you can? I would just say that the more projects that you do, the more you get to learn different um, nitty gritty that is involved in this. Probably try expanding it um, to R um, as a language because that can be a good um, step as well. Then there's um, a thing called um, BYOD, which I came up with, that's building your own da data set. So there's something where you can develop your own data set, um, just not with web scrapping, but with um, different things. I'm also going to share you all my um, blog link so, can, so you can just go and read some of my blogs. 
I usually write about data science and analytics. So there you go with my blog link. So there are uh, different things which I have uh, written up there. Some of the top skills for a data scientist or what are the popular tools and softwares, um, how to build your own data set, what are the top programming languages for data science or what uh, projects can a data science beginner take up. So there are different things which um, I keep writing every week. So you can check those out as well and feel free to connect with me and we are way up time. So let me know if you have any questions or else I'll just go and feel very overwhelmed with all your responses.